Hey everyone, Slender here. I'm going to show you guys how to kill Clive the Firestarter, or how I killed him anyway. So he's uh, he's actually can be pretty tough. He could be kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, he's level 30. He's going to give you Veil of Chaos. He's going to unlock the alchemy tables, some torches, and then these two recipes down here. So he is located, um, and I just used the mapgenie.io. Really, really good, you know, interactive V Rising map. And what you want to do, or what I do anyway, is I hide everything, and then I just pull up the area, and then the boss. So I just uncheck area over here, and V Blood, and this will show you, you know, where they're at. And this gray one is, you know, the the actual location. So mapgenie.io, really, really good map. So this is the build, the ability that you unlock. It's called Veil of Chaos, and you know it does your typical dash. But you can actually, uh, and you know, after you dash, your melee attack does 25% uh, bonus damage. But you can press it again, and he will spawn a second illusion. And that illusion will actually explode, dealing 50% magic damage to everybody. So it's a nice AoE. So there's one and two. So it's kind of like a double dash. And then that explodes. So it's actually pretty cool. I, I think it's pretty neat. One of my, um, one of the better abilities, I think. All right, so there's two different ways that you can aim your attacks so if i'm shooting at, if i'm trying to hit this torch right here i can either a put my cursor right on it and shoot it or i can b put my cursor ahead of, or you know behind it or in front of it and hope that i hit it you don't want to do the second one and for some reason i kept finding myself and catching myself doing it like that and just making it harder for me um, i don't ask me why i do that and the only reason i'm telling you about this is because if I can make that mistake. I'm sure there's a couple of you out there that are probably doing the same thing. And it just makes it much harder to land your range attacks. And this goes for your chaos bolts, you know, your not really this because that telegraphs where it's going to go. But yeah, you have the luxury of landing your attacks exactly where you want them by just keeping your cursor on the enemy the whole time. And another reason, you know, there's like, uh, you know, those bubble shooter games where, you know, you have to aim your bubble and and bounce it off the wall and try to get the three colors and you don't have that little line to help you well we do have our line and it's this thing right here so we need to use it and the another reason it's it's going to help a lot is because when you start fighting harder enemies they move around so much like clive the fire starter he's one of the early bosses but he moves around so much it's hard to land your range attacks because he's moving so one thing that you've probably noticed about this game is when you left click, there's an animation. Your projectile doesn't fire right away. It takes a while to load up. And same thing for your chaos bolts. I'm going to hit my R right now. And it takes a second for them to shoot. So what does that mean? That means you can start your attack here, but you can finish it over here. So when the enemy is moving around, instead of just aiming like this, you know, and trying to hit this spot right here, keep your cursor on the mob the whole time because if it moves you can move with it and your projectile will end up firing wherever the guy moved to and i'm going to show you guys that as i you know fight clive the fire starter so you know a couple things that you would think are obvious but you know i caught myself doing it quite a bit so maybe you are too and it should help a lot if you're like me and you know making things harder for yourself so the abilities i use are veil of blood for the heal Chaos Volley and Shadow Bolt for the uh, ranged, you know, big damage attacks. Well, what I consider big damage anyway. Um, any range is going to really help you a lot with this fight because he's moving all the time. And for that reason, I use the crossbow, but I also go with the uh, Merciless Copper Axes because, you know, they're my highest level item and uh, they do pretty good damage. You know, I really like the Q. It gives you good mobility. So that's the combination that I use. The heal, two more ranged DPS spells, and then, oh, and with the bow, the Q is really nice too. You can hit them from, you know, pretty far away with the Q. So I use that too. So once again, for this fight and pretty much every other boss fight, you want to clear out as much of this area as you can, or at least get a big chunk of it cleared out. So what I did is I just picked out a corner, cleared everything out with, you know, without aggroing the boss. And that gave me, you know, um, a good area to kind of kite them around and, and chunk them down without pulling a bunch of other mobs because if you can easily pull this whole room running from him and trying to avoid his aoe attacks and it is really really tough and that is gonna you know end the fight real quick because it's, it's really hard to survive when you've got like 20 different guys attacking you so two things try to clear out a big section of that room and uh, you're gonna want to fight him at night because he's out in the middle of the open so 
you're never gonna, it's gonna be really tough to kill them during the daytime. So you kind of have to wait around and then right before it starts turning nighttime, you know, start clearing out some of that area so that they don't start respawning right away. Um, so once you get it cleared out, you can go ahead and initiate. And uh, you know, just whenever you're, just try to remember to keep your spells on cooldown. Always be using those. There's uh, quite a few times where I forget that I even have them. They're ready to be used. You know, he's only a couple of hits away and I still am just sitting, letting him sit there, collect dust, you know, the, the two abilities. So keep those on cooldown. Make sure you keep your cursor on him the whole time. Don't try to lead him or anything. I mean, you need to lead him a little bit when he's running, but um, just like I was talking about earlier, just make sure that cursor's on him the whole time because there is, you know, kind of a wind up with your range of abilities and then, you know, the crossbow. And um, yeah, you want to switch to melee whenever you can. Maybe whenever your crossbow uh, queue is on cooldown, switch to melee. You know, do that dash, um, get some health back, and, you know, just chunk him down and, and uh, try to kite him the best you can and, and stay out of his AoEs.